welcome you all to this class on uh, defects in material so far we have learned how to construct from one dimensional lattice to two dimensional lattice and two di two dimension to three dimension what all types of symmetries which are associated with it on the basis of the symmetry elements which are associated okay with a point as well as with the lattice okay how they are grouped into distinct 230 space groups these with some examples we have considered and how to understand what is the type uh, from the uh, uh, table which is provided in the international union of crystallography for different types of uh, crystal symmetry okay uh, how to read and understand and now we'll talk about okay how to use this to construct a crystal in the material okay so when we say that we have to construct a perfect crystal okay or an ideal crystal what all information which is required the first thing which we require is what is the crystal system to which it belongs is it uh, triclinic monoclinic or uh, cubic or tetragonal or hexagonal this is the information which we require then what is the second information which we require is that whether it's a primitive or a non primitive lattice then if you have to construct the actual crystal we should know what the lattice parameters are okay but as far as from the symmetric considerations when we wanted to look out it uh, uh, construct a crystal structure lattice parameters are just not necessary but what is required is the symmetry information then the information which is required is that what are elements which are present and what is its stoichiometry then the third information the fifth information which we require is what is the molecular formula or essentially how many atoms are going to be in the unit cell okay then the next which comes is that if that information is available what are the positions which the atoms should occupy in the crystal that is provided by the position of atoms which is there in the wyckoff table okay these are all the information if these informations are available we can construct a crystal structure but if we look into that uh, table of international crystallography for the 230 space groups this information almost all this information are provided there but what is not provided is stoichiometry of the alloy and the molecular formula okay the rest of the information like the crystal system if it is primitive or not what is the type of uh, because uh, each of the each one are a specific type of a uh, symmetry uh, element which we consider the crystal having a particular space group if we consider that table that table gives all the information what is the crystal system okay whether it's primitive or not okay then what is the uh, position of atoms in the unit cell what are positions it can have atoms occupy looking at it we can get some information about okay what sort of molecular formulas the crystals can have what sort of stoichiometry it can have that is what we discussed in the last class okay but another information which is required is that when we talk of uh, most of the materials especially when we talk with respect to metallic systems okay many a time two different elements can be present but the material itself could be we called as a disordered material by disordered what i mean is it's not a positional disordering it is chemical disordering that is if two elements are there a and b and a element can occupy uh, has got some concentration say some 60 percentage and b element is 40 percentage are they occupying any specific position in the lattice or not if that is not the case that's when you say chemically disordered a and b randomly occupy essentially the same position in the lattice suppose it occupies uh, uh, the best which can have the one a position can be occupied in cubic crystal that is essentially the corners whether an a atom or a b atom can occupy the probability of occupation is divided by uh, is given by what the concentration which we have chosen okay suppose it is an ordered element Uh, if it is an ordered alloy then a atom will occupy a specific position okay 
and B atom will occupy another position, uh, specific position. So in ordered compounds, each element will occupy a specific type of a position in the lattice. Okay. Uh, another information which we should uh, have is that how are these crystal structure data? Because uh, if you look at it, uh, uh, many of the crystal structures have been determined. Already data is available. Okay. If we have to construct a crystal, we can go to that uh, crystal structure information data book and try to understand how they are represented. Okay. They also follow some uh, convention. Okay. So, if you look at that, how exactly it is being done. For a triclinic crystal, okay, the symbol which they use it is A, a monoclinic M, orthorhombicuo, it is not what the space group symbols which are used. Then tetragonal T, hexagonal H and cubic C. And then in addition to it, if the crystal is primitive, okay, it will be written as for triclinic AP. And if you take for an example, orthorhombic structure which is uh, body centered, it will be written as OI. Okay. This sort of uh, information will be used to represent essentially the Bravais lattice. Okay. And with the same Bravais lattice, okay, we can have crystal with n number of atoms within the unit cell. How is that represented? That is essentially given in a form that after these symbols, the number n is given. The n represents how many number of or what is the total number of atoms which is going to be present in the unit cell. Okay. This is what we call it as a, these symbols are called as the Pearson symbol because this Pearson's uh, uh, data handbook is available where all the crystals where experiments have been carried out and uh, crystal structure information uh, are the, has been generated from X-ray or neutron diffraction, they are tabulated and what are positions, different type of atoms or molecules will occupy, all the information is available. Okay. The different type of crystal data uh, are available. In all of them, they follow this sort of a convention. For example, suppose we take a cubic system. Okay. In a cubic system, suppose for copper or for aluminium. Okay. Uh, it has to be uniquely represented. Then the symbol which will be used for, uh, since it is uh, FCC, C will be used to represent, okay. C, F is for the face center and 4 will be used. Okay. That means that uh, this is, uh, uh, it contains 4 atoms per unit cell. Another crystal with the same crystal structure, okay, a compound which forms is sodium chloride. In sodium chloride, here essentially we have 8 atoms are going to be there, 4 atoms of sodium and 4 atoms of chlorine. So this will be CF8, this is how it will be represented. So, looking at this, uh, this symbol notation tells about how many are. So, this helps us immediately to decide what all positions, like of positions the atoms can occupy in the unit cell. To understand that. Okay. Another important one which we should see it is that in the literature, if we look, there are so many ways in which these crystal structures are. Uh, represented. Okay. One is called as a structure bearish. Okay. In this symbol notation which a uh, lot of metallurgists follow, where if you see that FCC structure is generally represented as A1, the symbol which is used. Okay. Then A2 represents uh, cubic. Okay. A3 represents HCP. Okay. This set of symbols are there. This is one. That is in the literature you will see all this. Then if uh, chemistry people use it, they will use the Schoenfly symbol which will be used to represent the different crystal structures. 
then another also is that just writing fcc bcc simple cubic that is one notation which is being followed and another is that uh, uh, space group from the international union of crystallography whatever is that symbol which is when that hergman uh, mcguin uh, crystal system that is used okay these are all various ways in which it is being represented okay nowadays as a convention okay it's being said that the it's better to follow the uh, symbols which are used in space group uh, international of space group table okay but still in uh, people who work on uh, solid state chemistry and molecular chemistry they prefer to use the shown play symbols because they represent these crystal uh, structures as far as they are concerned the type of symmetries which they look for it becomes quite obvious okay now let us look at uh, uh, some of the simple structures okay like fcc crystal if you consider it okay in a pure element either it could be copper nickel or aluminum okay we have seen that stacking of different type of hexagonal layer one on top of the other we can generate the crystal structure that is what is being shown which is an abc abc type of a stacking sequence okay then adjacent to it i had shown on the hard sphere model if we take balls and try to keep them to generate different type of layers how this structure will look like the same structure it is on keeping on the one 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 uh uh there is uh, hexagonal layers one on top of the each other that's what is being shown one the other picture especially this one shows essentially uh, the same structure but the viewing direction is different because the viewing direction is along either uh, 100 direction we are trying to view it so that we can see the cubic symmetry associated with this structure okay in this this is the direction which we are trying to view it which is essentially nothing but a one 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 direction okay so generally when we draw the crystal structure in three dimensions okay this is the way we represent the crystal structure okay this itself there are many types of projections are there which are being used this is one particular type of a projection in which we try to represent the uh, cubic lattice okay and then these are all the three equivalent positions these equivalent positions okay how do we show them for these equivalent position that is around each of the at, uh, atom position we can mark okay what is the uh, coordinates which are kind of fractional coordinates corresponding to them okay since it is a non primitive lattice okay we can construct a primitive lattice also for this structure yeah if we construct the primitive lattice it's constructed by taking the uh, all the atoms on the face centers of the nearest neighbors with respect to a coordinate okay then we can uh, and the unit cell which we can construct is going to be having a trigonal structure okay in this particular one this a1 a2 a3 that is in terms of the simple fcc lattice parameters okay if we take them as the unit vectors how to represent the uh, vectors a1 and a2 corresponding to the various coordinates of the primitive lattice okay this is what is being shown similarly we can uh, have a hexagonal close packing also with the same fcc structure in this if we wanted to construct a bravais lattice there is only one possibility that uh, one plane is kept uh, that is the hexagonal lattice one hexagonal lattice if you are constructed with that and part sphere model okay. the next one has to be cut only on top of them only a simple hexagonal and generally many crystals go into a crystal structure which we call hexagonal close packed structure a hexagonal close packed structure one should understand that it's not a bravais lattice and uh, as i mentioned uh, in uh, earlier classes okay there are many ways of projection one way in which we can project it is a hexagonal lattice can be projected okay then we can project uh, the next layer can be projected on top of it 
and we can mention what positions this occupy okay then that the third layer which will come will be coming on top of it which is a knee layer this way also the crystals can be represented the other um, crystal structure to with most of the elements they form is body centered cubic st uh, structure okay similar way in which is being represented here okay if we look at this particular structure okay with a heart sphere model okay it's essentially a, a square lattice okay which is being generated which is being kept on top of each other to generate a body centered cell so if we keep one square lattice on top of the other the heart sphere model create a simple cubic lattice okay but if we keep one layer and the next layer on top of it which is at the middle third layer on top of the first layer if you try to keep that it will generally create a body centered tetragonal structure but in that each of the square layer if atoms are shifted they are not touching each other the balls they are moved a little bit then for a particular distance we can have it as a body centered cubic lattice okay here again since it is a primitive lattice okay we can construct a uh, primitive uh, since it is a, a non primitive lattice we can construct a primitive lattice choosing the uh, specific vectors these vectors which are chosen are from the center find out which are the nearest atom position because we have to choose to construct a primitive lattice we choose the shortest translation vectors so the shortest translation vector in the case of a bcc is essentially along the body diagonal the atom which is at the center correct then you find out with respect to a origin another three non coplanar position with which the uh, primitive lattice could be constructed this is also essentially a rhombohedral or a trigonal structure okay but we don't use uh this structure to represent the simple cubic because the full symmetry cannot be uh, seen for this particular structure okay now let us uh, look at this fcc crystals okay where with uh for example for a pure element like assume it to be for nickel okay we have already constructed the lattice once the lattice has been constructed what do we want to do is that we wanted to identify find out if the second element we are trying to put it what position which it can go into the lattice one way to look at it is that you construct the unit cell three dimensional unit cell find out what are the positions where this atom can enter into it, the second element so there are only spaces which are vacant in the unit cell where it can go correct right? so those positions are shown by this open circles these are called as an octahedral sites the number of positions which are available if we uh, uh, inspect this figure okay we can find out uh, that one at the center okay then at the uh, corner or the edges we get it okay not on not on the faces so then we can find out uh, 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 the position which is at the edge how many uh, unit cells are going to share it on that basis we can get this information correct this we can calculate it but this is essentially a cumbersome process okay but instead the same information we can get it if you look at the vico position table which is given there here only the relevant vico position table which i had given here if you look at it in this table the a corresponds to the one having the maximum symmetry m3 bar okay and the number 4 which is giving is the equivalent positions how to find out the equivalent positions okay what we have to do it is that one more information which is being provided is that for the bravais lattice what are positions okay equivalent positions which are available that information is given so if we add with respect to this zero zero coordinate of one atom to position we can generate the other positions which the atoms will occupy correct 
correct? That is what essentially has to be done to generate this. This will tell the positions which atoms can occupy. But the unit cell, if we consider, like in uh, this particular case, essentially we are going to have 8 at the corners, okay? Then we require another 6 at the center, correct? So 14 positions are necessary to construct the unit cell, okay? But this table gives only uh, 4 positions, correct? Essentially. How that can be generated is that now we apply a translational symmetry to each of the point elements. That will generate, if we apply translational symmetry to the zero, 0 position, 8 positions will be generated, that will take care of the corners. Similarly, if we apply, then find out some of the positions will be outside of the unit cell. For example, suppose we take half half 0. 1, 0, 0 if we apply, this will be 3 by 2, half 0. This position is going to be outside of the unit cell. If you take this translation vector of the unit cell, if you apply, it becomes half of 1. This position will be now going to be on the unit cell. This way we generate the table for each of the position, try to find out okay, how many uh, atom positions will be there. That is applying translation symmetry because for to generate the, to construct the unit cell, we require all the atom positions. Okay. For that we have to, to the symmetry positions which are given, the translational symmetry also has to be added to it. Then we can find out which all positions are going to be there on the lattice or within the lattice, only thus has to be used to construct the crystal. Okay. Like that if we try to do it, we can find out the atom position. Now if you look here, <coughs> that uh, this position, the C position if you consider it, it has got a 4 bar 3M symmetry, okay, the side symmetry. And the positions which the atoms can occupy are given here. Okay. And the other one, if you consider this one particularly, here it has got four positions are there. The positions which atoms can occupy are where the interstices can be there because these are all the positions which has been filled. Because it's a nickel, uh, uh, the element nickel, we are trying to look at the crystal structure. Once these positions are filled, the vacant positions is going to be, next one is going to be this particular one. Okay. This is what the octahedral interstice are. Looking at this table itself, we get the information, this is going to be 4. Okay. Now, tetrahedral sites, if we try to look at it. Okay. The tetrahedral interstice, when we mean by tetrahedral, okay, the type of symmetry which it will have, it will have a threefold and a mirror symmetry is what it will be associated with it, correct? The tetrahedral sites are essentially going to be 8, correct? 8 are going to be there, these sites. Yeah. Essentially, if you look at the next sites, okay, the C position, like of position C, okay, the atomic positions which are possible are, okay, uh, it has given only corresponding to one particular. The tetrahedral sites are given by the Wyckoff position C. That can be one tetrahedral position which is, is shown here in this uh, unit cell which you can see it. Okay. Uh, the number of tetrahedral positions which are there are 8 and the site symmetry each of the tetrahedron is 4 bar 3m which is essentially a cubic symmetry, okay, and the positions of the tetrahedron are shown here. Okay. Uh, two positions are shown with respect to 0, 0 position. If we uh, multiply uh, these, okay, to uh, these terms, then we will be able to obtain positions of uh, all the eight tetrahedral positions. So, 
just looking at this table itself we get information that if an atom has occupied this position what are the other interstitial positions where the next atom could be kept or which are the positions which are vacant positions which are available for the next atom to be placed this convention when we use octahedron or tetrahedron okay uh, these words essentially in our mind we talk with respect to the symmetry which is associated with it also correct now what i have done it is that here i have just uh, so far when i have taken an example i have taken with respect to the crystals which has got lower symmetry when a crystal has just got a higher symmetry if you try to look at the space group symmetry table or the uh, graphical representation of the symmetry elements associated with it it's a very complicated structure and it's uh, difficult to understand just i had shown how complicated it is it is just for a uh, primitive lattice cubic okay with n3 baram symmetry that maximum symmetry element you can make out that various symmetry elements which are being represented uh, it will take a very long time to make one to understand that okay and around each lattice point if you try to look at it okay there are going to be about something like 48 atoms 48 equivalent positions that is if we put an atom around the lattice point or a motive around the lattice point equivalent 48 positions where the motive of an atom has to be kept so that this symmetry of the simple cubic lattice can be satisfied but in uh, pure elements uh, that's uh, area generally only polonium i think from simple cubic structure there the atom will be occupying the maximum symmetry element so we will be requiring only a number of uh, atoms per unit cell is going to be only one so or if you have to construct the unit cell we require only eight positions okay that's get turns out to be much simpler but if the same atom we assume that it's being placed at a position which is at a random position with no symmetry then its structure looks very complicated and if you look at the wyckoff table okay this gives that information about the all the equivalent position x y z corresponds to a particular position where we put one motif then what all the equivalent position the motif should be kept okay this part of it gives the special points which have got some symmetry associated with it okay what all the special positions okay how many atoms are how many positions are associated with it equivalent positions associated with it in the unit cell that is the information which is given okay now if you look at a bcc crystal okay the same way we can look at it the what are positions which are available that is either we draw the crystal structure and then try to find out what all positions which the atoms are uh, uh, occupying and which is the position which is uh, vacant position we can identify it. octahedral or tetrahedral positions which we can identify because for a pure metal if we consider it when the metal occupies all the lattice points okay the interstitial positions the next atom can occupy is the one which is uh, has got the maximum void size correct and then the energetics also will decide i had shown here again the relevant part of the uh, 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 table from the wyckoff table which is given in the international union of crystallography here again if we uh, look at it okay the number of equivalent uh, points okay which has got m3 bar m symmetry is only two that is one at the corner and one at the center of it correct that by when we add this uh, origin to the equivalent uh, position of lattice points then we get that information and then the next one if we consider it okay these are all the face centers at the face centers if you look at these are all the position where an atom can occupy the next atom or this is the position uh, which we call it as an octahedral void for a bcc structure if you look at this uh, void the nearest neighbors where are they placed okay 
four are placed okay on the face and these are at a by root 2 distance when a is the lattice parameter and two are placed perpendicular to this plane but at a distance of a by 2 so since they are not at equal distance this itself immediately you can make out that this has got a symmetry which is tetragonal type of a structure that is why you look at the side symmetry which is being given here the side symmetry is 4 by mm the 4 by mm corresponds to essentially a tetragonal structure okay and uh, how many equivalent positions are going to be there 6 okay so essentially we will have 6 octahedral voids and then if you look at the tetrahedral voids also this corresponds to the uh, Wyckoff position D in this Wyckoff position D also here we have 4 bar M2 this is again a tetrahedral one that is why if you look at the uh, with respect to the central position where the nearest neighbors are they are going to be at the center it is unequal distance that is uh, from the center position four of them are going to be at an uh, distance of a by root 2 and uh, another two are going to be at a distance of uh, a by 2 okay this you can make out uh, not a by 2 this one can calculate it right that is this atom from this this position this position this one this one is going to be at a different distance correct so this is not a regular tetrahedron so in a fcc if we consider in a regular tetrahedron from the center at equal distance all other neighboring atoms are situated similar type of uh, uh, in a similar way we can find out interstitial positions in hexagonal lattice as well okay this i will not go into the detail but i am just uh, giving the figure okay and what i would like you people to do is just to look into the international of cosmography table okay find out the space group symmetry corresponding to it okay identify the positions of tetrahedral and octahedral voids okay when these sort of voids are there okay especially in many of the structures where different type of elements we added we said that by filling up these uh, voids we can generate different types of compounds correct if a and b elements are there two elements are there okay especially in ionic or covalent bonded compounds normally what happens is that it, these uh, interstitial uh, voids are filled up okay because whenever they form for example ionic compound sodium chloride it forms when sodium takes one electron okay and it forms uh, uh, no when sodium gives one electron and the chlorine accepts one electron okay the size of the chlorine ion becomes very large and that of the sodium ion shrinks and it becomes very small so both have got that cation has got a smaller size and the anion has got a larger size so essentially the cations having smaller size can go into these voids okay the generate the crystal <coughs> so what we are considering it now is how the structures can be constructed based on filling up of these interstices okay let us just take an example with respect to fcc okay that as I mentioned earlier, okay, this position, the 4A position which corresponds to the corners and the face centers are being occupied by one A type of an atom. Then the possibility for the B type of an atom which can come is the next one is this octahedral positions. Okay. Suppose we assume that in this particular case like we take an example of sodium chloride. Okay. The sodium chloride has got the space group symmetry which is F M3 bar M, correct? That means that in this one the sodium atom 
the lattice which is constructed with both the sodium as well as the chlorine, both of them have to have an FCC structure. Okay. <coughs> so that means that the when the sodium atom, assume that the sodium atom is uh, first used to construct the lattice, then it is occupying all the corner atom positions. Then the chlorine atoms if you do it, it has to go into one at the middle and at all the corners, now all the edges and that is how it will be constructing this lattice which also has got. And now the composition which it can have is AB stoichiometry, right? The composition is a 50-50 composition, okay. The same structure could be constructed either taking chlorine at the origin, okay, both ways but both are equivalent, okay. And we can construct and another way this can be filled is that one type of an atom A atom occupies this, the B atom can occupy this particular position, okay, right. Let us just look at uh, this particular one case. Then what will be the stoichiometry which it will have? A B 2, okay. A, a typical example is a fluoride structure, calcium fluoride okay, has got an AB2 structure, okay. Here all the calcium atom, okay, will occupy the corners of the cube, okay, which is essentially given by a Wyckoff position 4A, okay, and the fluor. 4A or 4B, both the options are available, okay. Then the uh, edges, okay, will be occupied by uh, uh, this one. Uh, uh, that is, uh, no, sorry, not the edges, the corner atoms are occupying uh, uh, 4A position, okay. 8C positions are going to be occupied by the fluorine ions, okay. So this way that means that this will be at the, uh, the unit cell itself can be subdivided into 8 small cubes, okay. And the center, uh, the body diagonal at the center of each of the unit cubes can be occupied by fluorine atoms, correct. And another way in which this sort of construction we can represent because if you look at the unit cell there are so many atom positions are going to be there, it is going to be extremely difficult, okay, to visualize it. For which what it can be done is that one can have a cage like this where it is being shown that the center is chlorine, okay, because this is occupying a tetrahedral site and at all the corners, okay the corner of the tetrahedron, the uh, calcium ion is going to be there, okay. Instead of showing this type of uh, all the atom positions, with this type of tetrahedrons also we can construct the crystal structure, right. That I will come to later in some specific structures where when the number of atoms becomes very large, okay. Now for example, uh, in uh, metallurgy especially in steels and most of the nickel base super alloys, the type of carbides which they form of two type of carbides which they form, okay. One is called as uh, M23C6, okay, that M represents metal and C the carbon. Another type of a carbide which forms are M6C, okay. In this carb, both of them going to a crystal structure which is essentially a cubic one, okay. Here if you look at the total number of the stoichiometry base there is 29, okay. If you look at the space group table 29 cannot be there, okay. The number of atoms which are going to be there in this unit cell is essentially going to be 116. In this particular case it is going to be 112 atoms will be there in the unit cell. If you have to draw a unit cell like that, 
and then try to locate it, it's uh, going to be very complicated. So for that purpose, these octahedral or tetrahedral cages are shown where the nearest neighbor coordination will tell what sort of ion is going to be adjacent to it. With that sort of cages, one can try to construct the unit cell. Okay? Yeah. Then, similar to that CAF2, another type of a structure which is there called as an antifluorate structure. What is a, that antifluorate structure? A typical example is Li2O. Here, the oxygen atoms okay, are going to be uh, uh, 4, okay. lithium atoms are going to be 8. So, in this particular case, that oxygen atoms will occupy all the corners, okay. that is essentially the oxygen ions. Okay. That cation is going to occupy the corners and the uh, center of each of the small 8 cubes are going to be occupied by lithium ions. Okay. Because the structure, if you look, because the cation and anions, okay, in these two cases are here anion occupies the corner and here cation occupies the corner and this is a fluoride structure. So, this is called as an antifluoride. Okay. It is only a terminology which is used. Okay. In this one, if Pearson symbol, if you try to use it, it will be called as CF12. Okay. This is how it will be explained because the total number of atoms are going to be 8 plus 12. 12 atoms are going to be present in the unit cell. Okay. There are many typical compounds are there which you see it on structure by table Pearson's data book or any other uh, 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 books on chemistry or uh, metallurgy, you can get all this information. Okay. Mm. Then and another structure which we, because these are all on FCC lattice which we consider it. Okay. Another one on an FCC lattice where we can have is that structure which we know very well is diamond cubic. In diamond cubic, okay, uh, we say that only there are 8 atoms per uh, unit cell. Okay. Generally, we describe this crystal as telling that uh, carbon atoms occupy all the phase centers. In addition to it, some positions along the body diagonal are also being occupied. But when a atom occupies corners alone, okay. if we consider with respect to the crystal structure, if only those positions, if they have a Wyckoff position specific one, okay, then it cannot as that uh, as I mentioned in the last class, okay, the same atom cannot occupy in another Wyckoff position, because the same type of an atom has to occupy all the Wyckoff positions. That means that the carbon should have carbon atom should have 8 Wyckoff position should be there in the unit cell. If that is going to be there, then this cannot have the same crystal structure as that of considering it as an FCC. Though the Bravais lattice is FCC, okay. now if you look at the crystal structure, that is why if you look at the Wyckoff positions which is being given for the carbon, okay, here you can immediately see that 8 atoms are going to be there with 4 bar 3m symmetry and in fact the symmetry of this one also if you look at the space group symmetry is not here it is f m 3 bar m for most of the that sodium chloride calcium fluoride and all these structures and uh, for diamond it is f d 3 bar m what the D represents essentially is that there is a along the body diagonal there is a glide is also going to be there. Okay. So it is a it's entirely a different crystal structure. It is not the same as that of a sodium chloride or copper. Okay. That one should keep it in mind. Okay. Other elements which uh, form into these structures are uh, silicon, germanium, tin, all of them. Okay. Most of them exhibit uh, uh, like silicon, germanium and tin exhibit some semiconducting properties also, correct. And the type of bonding which all of them exhibit are covalent type of a bonding. In tin it is a beta tin, okay. And uh, the unit cell is being shown here, okay. 
what all positions which can be occupied okay equivalent positions are represented as i mentioned there are two ways in which we can represent it either we show the full unit cell or the position which is very difficult to understand looking at it or it can be just shown the projection the 001 projection and that zero this corresponds to the position which the atoms occupy okay and then these positions half positions are where the atoms are going to be there on these two see and then the other positions are uh, 1 by 4 this shows that at, at what height they are being placed okay this way also we can represent the crystal structure there are many ways in which it been it's a half tetrahedral sites are filled in fcc but that is not the correct way to look at it that is fcc bravais lattice if we consider it it is different but essentially these have got a different type of a space group symmetry itself they are not the same as that of a, a copper structure okay that one should always keep it in mind <coughs> now we consider one because so far what we consider the two structures are where in the fcc lattice it is essentially the octahedral sites okay are getting filled okay now let, let us look at uh, are tetrahedral sites which are getting filled that is what we looked at it this is another one where the lattice is fcc okay like zinc sulfide if we consider it what are positions which the atoms can occupy okay here also if you look at what is the space group it's a cubic structure but it is 4 bar 3m okay so for all of them the lattice is fcc but once atoms occupy specific position the symmetry has changed okay and uh, the information about the crystal structure if you look at the pearson's data handbook they give all this information okay what all that structure is cubic okay lattice parameters are given z equals 4 okay the how many molecular cells are going to be there in the structure then space group is given because that each type of atom is four are going then what all the atom positions they are also given here okay if this information is available okay we can construct the crystal structure okay so here again the way in which it is being represented is that with either zinc or the sulfur as the corners we are trying to represent how the crystal structure is formed okay in this particular case the zinc atom occupies the corner in this particular case the sulfur atom occupies and uh, as i mentioned earlier uh, these tetrahedral sites we can just show them as a cage where the the zinc uh, the sulfur is at the center and zinc are co occupying corner positions or zinc at the center and sulfur occupying corner positions this is a tetrahedron and then we can draw the various types of tetrahedrons around each of these that will also join together and form a unit cell okay that's the way we can do it there can be structures which are based on not one uh, two elements but there can be more than two elements can be there okay. let us consider a case where it's a strontium titanate okay this is also if we look at it the uh it has three elements which are present and it has a symmetry which is pm uh, 3 bar m or pm 3m okay the, from this one can make out that it's first a primitive lattice okay and uh, the information which are available is the density is given okay and then the lattice parameter is given if we know uh, uh how to find out whether the stoichiometry that the molecular formula is the same as that of the stoichiometry or whether there is a difference is going to be there for which what we require is that if you know the lattice parameter okay and if you know the density we will be getting some information about the what is going to be the uh, molecular weight we can find out with that volume okay 
from the stoichiometry we can find out what is going to be the molecular weight. If both of them turn out to be the same, then it is uh, the molecular formula and uh, uh, stoichiome stoichiometry that is the ratio if we take it, it is going to be 1. If that is not the case, then some uh, integer value will come that will tell you how many molecules are there in that unit cell with that stoichiometry. Correct. That is what essentially is being done in this calculation. Okay. In this specific case, it is going to be only 1. Okay. Then essentially what is important is that if you look at the crystal structures, this is A, B, 3, right? This particular stoichiometry, what is the type of structure which it can form? I had just shown for the, since it is a primitive uh, cubic structure, okay, shown the Wyckoff table positions which are relevant. Okay. Then looking at the Wyckoff table, we can immediately make out that yes, the structure with this type of asymmetry is possible. Now, strontium atom can occupy either one A or B. Okay. If strontium occupies A position, the B position will be a titanium or vice versa. Okay. Then as far as oxygen is concerned, there are two choices are going to be there. Which is it which it is going which it will occupy? This depends upon, suppose we have that information about the atomic radius, uh, not atomic radius, if you have the information about the lattice parameter which is available. If the lattice parameter information is available, immediately we can find out okay, which position because these ions have got specific radius size. If I occupy a particular position that uh, lattice parameter itself could be calculated from knowing the ionic radii. Using that data, we can get some information about okay, which positions they will be occupying. Okay. Here it is already, it is uh, in this particular table it is given, the strontium has to occupy these positions okay. and titanium at uh, uh, A position, okay. that is B position is occupied by strontium, oxygen is going to occupy out of these it is 3D. Okay. If you construct the unit cell with respect to this is how it will look like strontium occupying the uh, uh, position, yeah, titanium occupying the A position and oxygen occupying the uh, C position. Okay. And you see this particular, there are many ways in which this structure is being represented. You look at this particular structure. Okay. This way what we have taken it is that around every titanium position there is a octahedral cage is going to be there. right? With an octahedral cage itself we can show these structures okay, when the number of atoms are going to be there. That is what essentially being, this is the same structure which is being shown with all the atom positions. You can make out that this is much more complicated to visualize it where this becomes much easier for visualization, mm -hmm. correct. This is what is being done in many cases, okay. <coughs> there is an another this is also taken from the literature. Okay. Uh, this is for a, a crystal okay, which is uh, uh, SR2, AL, TA that is tantalum and uh, oxygen which contains. Okay. This is the stoichiometry SR2, AL, TA. Then C. So, these are all the positions which atoms can occupy and it has a lot, got a symmetry which it has got. It is space group FM. 3 bar m and the lattice parameter is around 7.8. Okay. This is the positions have been determined using x-ray diffraction. Okay. These are all the values which are given. Okay. What are positions which the atoms can occupy? Okay. This only tells about the uh, 
uh, fractional coordinates of the different atom positions, correct? Okay. Now, what we have to do to construct the crystal structure, we should know all the coordinates which we have to generate. Okay. Here, if we look at the relevant Wyckoff position table, we can immediately make out that uh, this position, the aluminum will occupy this position. Okay. The tantalum only one is going to be there because in the stoichiometry, aluminum and tantalum, if you consider it. So, the aluminum or tantalum will occupy corner and the body center and the strontium can occupy the face center, correct? No, strontium will occupy the position with respect to these structures, okay. These are all the positions which the strontium, okay, yeah. Then the position which oxygen can occupy, okay, this is one particular position which is there and this is an another position which is there, these two possibilities which are there, okay. What has been determined in the crystal structure is that it occupies this a position, okay. Because here we are showing only one particular position, but finally what we have to do it is that we have to multiply it by that add to this uh, equivalent positions and generate what all positions which the atoms will be occupying, okay. When we do that, okay, no, it is not this one 24D, it is occupying 24E position, okay. 24E that only the value of x that other two are 0, okay. This is the position which it is occupying that has been seen. The value of x turns out to be 1 fourth, okay. So, how many atoms are going to be there in the unit cell? From this, since it is FCC structure, okay, this is going to be aluminum has to be 4 because the stoichiometry, if we say AL, okay, but the number of atoms in the unit cell has to be 4, tantalum has to be 4, then oxygen has to be 24, strontium has to be 8, correct? These are all the. Hmm? So, formula per unit cell will be. 4, okay. That is, this is uh, telling that uh, this stoichiometry, the 4 times it has to be multiplied to get it. Yeah, correct. Now, these coordinates can be calculated, what are the positions the atoms will be occupying, the strontium, aluminum, tantalum, oxygen, all these. And once these positions information is available, one can construct the crystal structure. Okay. If you look at this table, this position is being given as 0 0.24, not exactly even 0 0.25. The reason essentially is that many of this position here that x, what it corresponds to, it is a fractional indices, but the value has to be determined. It can be in any position, it can be. What will be the value of x will be determined by the type of bonding which is present there. And uh, in many of these compounds, Okay. Essentially, the electrostatic force also comes into the picture. Okay. That will decide the exact position which the atom is going to occupy. Because of it, it may not be occupying a uh, position with a specific uh, fractional indices. It can have values which can be slightly different from the value which is given. That is why here you can see that it is 0.24, not 0.25. Okay. Now, if this information is available, now one can find out the bond distances also, how many oxygen atoms will be there around aluminum or tantalum and strontium, okay. And then one can construct the unit cell also. If you look into the literature, okay, there are uh, like especially in Pearson's table, for various elements, this is the sort of information which is being provided. Like for copper, if you look at it, it is uh, one. You see this A1 which is being given, which is the structure bearish simple, okay, which I mentioned, face centered cubic FCC and then the space group is also given. The space group number is also given, so that which number we have to look for and the lattice parameter which is determined and the positions of the atoms, that is it is 4A, that is 4 atoms, A positions, Wyckoff position, that information is given. Similarly, for these are some few examples which I had given for graphite, if it is hexagonal, okay, the space group symbol is being given, okay. 
how many atom positions are going to be there okay all these informations are provided correct similarly for zinc blend okay in summary if you look at it we started this uh, entire section on uh, perfect crystal starting from a taking a single point a lattice point okay then how they can be arranged in one dimension okay then from that one dimensional arrangement what all symmetries associated with it then this one dimensional lattice if we arrange them we can generate two dimensional lattice what all types of symmetries are there which are their point group symmetry and on this if we put a motif around this two dimensional lattice what all types of symmetries which the crystals can have the same we have done it for a three dimensional crystal okay that from two dimension three dimensional crystal how to construct it what all types of brabace lattice how many types of brabace lattices we can have space group lattice then in those lattices if you are putting motifs around them okay what are types of specific crystal structures which can be formed which are 200 in total 230 are possible okay then looking into the space group table okay if you have to construct a crystal structure what all positions at which the atoms have to be placed how to go about it when we know the stoichiometry okay and how to find out the molecular weight if you get the information about the crystal structure and also that information about the density of the material okay and if you know the lattice parameter we can find out whether the molecular formula and the stoichiometry okay, is that same or is it that uh, many more molecular formula crystals are there in the unit cell that information which we can calculate it okay so effectively how to construct a perfect crystal we have looked at it okay in the next class we will look at defects in the uh, materials so we will start with point defects in the material okay a lot of uh, assignments which i will give okay once you do this assignment one will be able to understand okay how exactly this space group table has to be used to generate different type of crystal structures okay we'll stop here